Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Airplanes are used all around the world for travel, leisure, research, and military operations. First deployed in June of 1993, engineers designed the C-17 Globemaster to be the most flexible cargo aircraft to enter the airlift force. Three, four, uh, probe heat switch lights are off. Though it suffered from several challenges and design flaws in the beginning, many changes were made to upgrade the Globemaster. And it has successfully rendered humanitarian support and delivered massive cargo to numerous locations worldwide ever since it was declared operationally ready in January of 1995. The aircraft was equipped with a robust landing gear system with a single nose strut featuring two sturdy Dunlop tires. The plane also has two twin-strut tandem gear assemblies, one on each side with three wheels per strut. This unique landing gear configuration with a total of 14 wheels, combined with a powerful pneumatic lift system, enables the C-17 to meet the demanding airlift missions, including carrying oversized payloads in unpredictable conditions and landing just about anywhere in the world. Uh, we're just uh, moving, moving cargo from point A to point B, uh, supporting the fight on the ground. Uh, well, we uh, planners inside get it all started, and then uh, we come out, get it all ready to uh, take it to the fight uh, with the help of the ground. The creation of landing gear for each aircraft is closely related to the mission of that craft. The C-17 serves as the main strategic lift aircraft for the transportation of troops and equipment in the U.S. Air Force. These designated locations could be main operating bases or even forward bases in the deployment area. The wheels of the aircraft alone are 390 pounds, and each requires a tire dolly for removal during repairs. Maintaining the robust C-17 takes a highly trained and experienced team. That duty falls upon the 3rd and 176th maintenance squadrons who are charged with completing an in-depth four-day scheduled inspection of each assigned C-17 approximately every 180 days. The 437th maintenance squadron is also responsible for the upkeep of 40 assigned C-17A aircraft. Also known as the Mavericks, these men certainly do make it happen as they perform many different types of maintenance on the aircraft. Yeah. Clear. Every single check involves searching the C-17 for possible defects. While the aircraft is docked for a home station check, engineers search the craft for anything that could become a problem before it turns into one. And, at other instances, after the checks, it may necessitate a team being called in to decontaminate the entire aircraft. Well, this is one of our key duties during a deployment is to have an ACCA line on ready, uh, ready to decon if the air crews go into any uh, areas that may, they may have gotten contaminated uh, and they're coming back to and needing decon. It's gonna take you forever to do it. All right, just like that. These procedures are meticulously followed throughout the U.S. Air Force, especially on planes like the U-2 Dragon Lady, which relies on engineers to keep it in top working shape 
due to the high altitudes it must reach during its reconnaissance missions. The original U-2A was designed by Kelly Johnson and by Lockheed Corporation in collaboration with Skunk Works. It took its first flight in August of 1955. This version was far less capable and was about 40% smaller than the upgraded versions that would be built later. One major change, the new U-2 Dragon Lady design was stripped of its original landing gear. Rather than a typical fighter jet's three-wheeled landing gear, the U-2 Dragon Lady was given two wheels. Both were placed along the center of the plane. During takeoff, the aircraft would have two additional wheels, one on each wing, that were to be dropped as the plane ascended. This ingenious landing gear design would shave several pounds off the aircraft, allowing for the jet-powered glider to easily reach higher altitudes of over 70,000 feet. Due to the difficulty of landing a plane with stripped-down landing gear, the pilot needed to be assisted by a ground crew. This team was led by a chase car, which drove after the plane to relay information such as height and position through radio. This would then allow the pilot to easily land the aircraft. As the U-2 slows, the pilot can carefully tip the wings to the ground and bring the aircraft to a stop. The Dragon Lady's extreme altitudes could lead to decompression sickness and hypoxia if the pilot is not outfitted properly. So all pilots flying the U-2 are required to wear pressure suits. However, the suit is so complex that a special team of support technicians must help the pilot put it on and take it off. Each suit is tailored specifically to the pilot. To help do this, a pilot fitting facility opened on Luke Air Force Base on June 10, 2019. Run by Lockheed Martin, the facility houses two technical engineering companies for the fittings, which usually is a very long and meticulous job for some jet plane types. Outfitting an F-35 jet pilot, for instance, is typically a two-day process. Day one includes about 13 measurements to determine predicted fit including helmets, which are custom-made to fit a pilot's head while ensuring proper padding. After the predicted fit, pilots then try on the suit to make sure it works. Every time a new piece of equipment is added to the suit, pilots must make a series of movements to ensure maneuverability. The pilots must have both a perfect fit for themselves, as well as a comfortable suit and helmet fit for the space provided by the F-35 cockpit. Pilots must also all go through a special G-Force training. This mitigates the risks associated with high altitudes, increased acceleration and gravity on the human body as they ascend. Fighter pilots are tasked with taking on aerial combat missions while trying not to lose their composure. Yet the aggressive high-speed maneuvers threaten to drain blood from their heads with centrifugal force. At 4 Gs, pilots describe the feeling as like being on a roller coaster. In extreme situations, pilots could pass out which is why training for these types of scenarios is incredibly important. From modifying and improving landing gear systems to assuring the safety of pilots at extremely high altitudes, 
Aeronautics Engineering has truly come a long way. And with the current trends, there is a firm guarantee that the world is yet to see more stunning features on these flying machines. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.